Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Vocast. I'm your host, Drew. We've got a special guest with us today, Miss Jennifer Glatzhofer. Is that the right way to pronounce it? There's many ways to pronounce the name, but you've done a fab job. <laughs> <laughs> so for those that don't know Jen here, she is a another reactor like me, like Peter Barber, like uh, some of the others out there as well. She is also a vocal coach and also does her own music. Uh, do, so do check her music out at some point. Very, very talented. We're glad to have you with us today. We're going to be uh, diving into your music journey and just learning more about you. So you ready? I'm so ready. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so um, to get started off, um, I forgot to ask this question when I was with doing my podcast with Marwan yesterday. But um, we'll, we'll so briefly tell us what kind of musical experience you have and then we'll jump in our first questions. OK, um, so I feel like music's always been in my life. Um, my dad, my mom would always be playing music uh, from a young age. My dad, mainly Bruce Springsteen, and my mum, mainly <laughs> Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra. So those kind of musical inputs. And then I just, I wanted to continue studying it. I wanted to know more, um, you know, took it as subjects at school, took it further and studied musical theatre. Um, at university at university then studied for an extra year after that in London um and then have just always kind of you know kept around the music kind of scene the acting kind of scene just kind of you know just saying yes to all the opportunities that I could uh right. I could to and just kept kept up with that yeah for sure and you were so you've been doing music since age of what again i don't remember you said uh... um yeah young age uh there's i mean i've got a video of me like i think my sister was born so i must have been three or four uh dancing around to some carpenters on the kitchen table uh or the diet or the coffee table sorry <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah like uh, just a really young age i've always just been around music my granddad actually is a professional or was a professional opera singer so oh well, that's we used cool to go and see <clears throat> I used to go and see him, you know, he'd uh, <clears throat> show me his studio, go through little warm ups and everything. So it's always kind of been around uh, from a young age. Yeah, that's awesome. So those of you that don't know her, you're in for a treat. So <laughs> um, so we're going to dive into the first question. Super light, super easy. What's your favorite or preferred drink? Favorite or preferred drink. I'm going to be so boring and say that I actually really like water. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I always have water everywhere. I know it's like the typical singer thing. A bit cliche, um, but. I know. I actually really love water. But um, otherwise, yeah. in the morning, I'll go coffee, <clears throat> black coffee. Um, and, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did watch your interview with Peter Barb and I was like, oh, you stole my answer. <laughs> oh, I love black coffee. It's great. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I used to have. Uh, I never used to have sugar in my coffee. I used to have milk. But then one year I was like, let's just see if I like it without. And uh, now I just haven't looked back. So uh, black coffee it is. Um, yeah, I otherwise those two mainly I'd probably during the day. And then if I'm if I'm feeling fancy later on, I do love a good Baileys. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I thought it was funny, too, because not that many people drink black coffee. Or at least it seems like it. Really? <laughs> it, or at least over here. I'm, yeah. I'm, I know I get a bad rap in my family. They're like, well, you drink that, that bean water. My yeah. girlfriend gives me such a hard time. She's like, why do you drink that bean water? Well, Too far, I get, I get a few looks. They're like, what are you? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Honestly, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty awesome. There's some really good brands that I've gotten stuck into over here. And I'm just like, mm. have you ever had, um, I don't know if this is a, a US or a UK thing, but uh, have you ever heard of Seattle's Best Coffee? Uh, no, I'm awful with names as well. <laughs> Before we go with names, but no, I don't think I have. Oh man, but there's some there's some Seattle's best over here that I've I've really enjoyed. But Ooh, yeah. I love me some black coffee. <laughs> huh, okay, so now we're gonna jump into some more music ish questions. So uh, let's dive in. So, um, what or who got you into singing? If there was any one specific person or any one specific thing. Um, I think. <clears throat> Well, I mean, I, when I was younger, my mum obviously realised that, oh, she, this <laughs> this kid likes some music, I think. <laughs> Let's throw <laughs> her in some, uh, like, acting classes or uh, dance. I did, uh, there was, like, a ballet and tap and modern class near me <clears throat> that I went to from a young age. Uh, so I, tap was, tap's my preferred dance. I love me some tap dance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I carried that on as well. Um, 
but yeah, so my mum, I'm very grateful for my parents for kind of like, you know, it's kind of like, try this. Okay, they don't like this. Try this. Try it. And I liked music. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So I kind of stayed with that. And also, obviously, having my granddad um, kind of share his love for, for music and singing, I then wanted to learn more. So he obviously opened uh, my eyes to a lot of that. Um, and then definitely through school, I ha I was very close with... Um, like the music and drama teachers, uh, you know, I, I, every lunchtime, break time, you'd find me walking over to the music room, <laughs> uh, listening to whoever's there playing um, whatever instrument or just on the piano myself, yeah. having chats with those like they, they were they were really like, I think, mentored me into what path I was going to go like, you know, it's just really nice advice from them. Uh, sometimes I'd feel low, I'd go up and talk to them. So I think I've got quite a few quite a few like faces pop up in my mind for who have always been there to like guide me. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, meant to be. And so you, so your primary focus, well, well, one of your bigger desires in music more lied in, within like musical theater. Is that right? Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 That definitely. <clears throat> so um, this leads us into the next question. You kind of sort of touched on it. Um, who are some of the most influential figures, both in your life as well as well as your musical career? I know you mentioned your grandfather, your parents. Yeah, so my uh, granddad definitely is a uh, a big one. My my dad isn't really musical. <laughs> he he lo likes to try, uh, and every so often there's like a few notes, and I'm like, <laughs> yes, go on, dad. Um, but my I've got very supportive parents. They've always kind of like. Um, uh, yeah, wanted and like supported me whenever they're, you know, singing live or, yeah. um, you know, always supported me. Um, yeah, I think uh, there's a few, again, like a few teachers and then, and then especially along when I went ahead and studied musical theatre, um, mm -hmm. like there's a few teachers there as well that really kind of stood out that I, I felt like safe with them. I could go over to them, like talk to them. Um, and they'd be there just to, because it's such, it's such a, uh, I don't know if you know much about musical theater. <laughs> or, I'm um, actually not very knowledgeable about it. So no. I'm learning a lot. But it, it's, it's just, you know, I, I think it's very, in the music industry, acting industry, musical theater, you know, it's, it can be very daunting because everything's, you know, on you all at once. It's, you, you feel like you need to, I guess with everything, you feel like you need to know where you're going at all times. <laughs> so it's nice having yeah. those around you um, who have either done it or have been in similar situations just to kind of sit you down and be like, you don't need to know everything now. It's all yeah. okay. Um, take it as it comes. So yeah, I think um, definitely whilst studying, there's a few like teacher names, mental names that pop up that I still have very fond memories of right now. Yeah, for sure. And they they must have had a fairly significant amount of uh, influence, or otherwise you just wouldn't be here, I'd imagine. Yeah, exactly. Like you know, that's what I mean. Like some days you're kind of like, is this really right for me? Like, can I really do this? Like, there are so many other people like me in the world that are doing this. What difference can I make? Um, yeah, yeah. But then having having someone that kind of is your leading like, little leading post, <laughs> like oh yeah. You. Yeah, I they think that's, yeah. gives you the boost you need, right? Exactly. And like sometimes they they don't even need to say the right thing. They're just there listening to you. I think that's really important. It's just, it just you know, it, it's to show that you're not alone. <laughs> yes, I think that's really yes. Important. it really is. And the coolest thing about it is that those people oftentimes help you reveal your niche within the music industry. Yeah. It helps sure. you re realize your uh, specialization, I guess. Yeah. Um, what is something that one of those influential figures has said to you that stuck with you your entire music journey? Oh, oh, this is when I cannot cannot think too many things. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess just to I guess just to like not it's okay to say even though i'm just kind of going to contradict myself now actually <laughs> say yes to things but also if it's just not right for you and you feel like actually it doesn't give me the joy that i need to so uh, for example i i i auditioned i had um i got this job uh i you know it got i got passed through the stages i got this job but i was just thinking about it and i was i don't think it would give me any joy and from what i'm doing right now 
like you know putting that new job into what I have now would I actually have the joy or would I actually enjoy it as much as what I'm doing right now and actually no and that's not a bad thing um (laughs) so you know it's not you don't have to say yes to everything just because it's a job and it's going to give you something on the cv just say yes 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 you know if it's actually not going to uh make you feel happy then that's the main thing like why are you taking it kind of thing yeah um that was uh that was who's that it wasn't an agent it was um so one of my university lectures i think uh because it was just after i finished my university that i was just like right what do i do (laughs) because i don't actually and they're like well don't do it then (laughs) you're saying the answer right there jen and i'm like yeah but surely i'm fresh just out of training i should be taking whatever i can get right but actually but at the same time you want to find something that brings you enjoyment yes yeah and i think that's uh, i think um it's quite tricky when you first you know leave training you're such like an eager person you just want to say yes to everything you're just like yeah this is i'm so ready for this i'm so pumped i'm ready to say yes 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 but if it's not going to give you joy if it's not going to fulfill you know you equally don't know <laughs> you might go ahead and actually enjoy it but yeah, um yeah i think it's it's just it's sitting down and like will it actually make me feel happy in the long run or will i just actually is it something that's not really going to be for me um so that kind of changed my mentality a little bit and i kind of now i feel like i'm in a position where i kind of can choose a little bit more which is nice it's a nice place to be in (laughs) right yeah yeah if that is for sure it's it's a beautiful feeling knowing that you actually have the ability to pick and choose what you do in the music industry yeah and that and and the fact that you can pick stuff that you know for a fact you'll enjoy yeah yeah obviously there's still like you know i I think uh (laughs) you know, being self-employed, there's going to be moments where you're like, I have to say yes, because I am kind of not doing anything. Um, right, yeah. But there are, it comes with like waves, you know, there are some times where you can sit back and be like, whoa, I, you know, look at what I've done. Okay, I can actually sit back now and um, pick and choose. <laughs> so, yeah, it's nice a good feeling. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you play any instruments? Um, I know you use a piano in your reaction videos. Do you play it on a regular basis? Uh, yeah, so the band that I'm in, uh, we're, we're a like function wedding band, party band, uh, called Joyrider, a little plug. Uh, but yeah, I play the keys <laughs> there, I play the keyboard and I'm a lead singer there. Um, oh, that's awesome. So I, I, I've always been interested in musical, uh, music theory, sorry. Like, uh, you know, I liked writing out my harmonies and finding all the inversions out, like just all things like that. Um, but I never really played, played the piano, I guess. And it wasn't until I had to step in for someone for the band that I was like, oh, if I'm going to step in, <laughs> I need to maybe <laughs> up my, uh, piano skills. So I was there like practicing and everything. Yeah. Um, so it's very much self-taught and a little bit of guitar as well. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. <clears throat> so you, yeah. so you do play, when did you start playing guitar? Uh, uh, it must have been like 14, 15. Um, so yeah, so over 10 years ago. Um, but yeah, it's like really little <laughs> little things, little chords. I like writing like my own, my own little songs on there. I think the first song I learned, <laughs> this is really <laughs> embarrassing. Um, I have a huge Friends fan. So I was like, yes, that's a good I'm show. I'm going to learn Smelly Cat. And I was there going like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's great. <laughs> that's a heck of a first song to learn. Ooh. Smelly cat. (laughs) (laughs) That's a heck of a song to learn. You know, I think my first song I ever learned was a country song. I think it was something from, um, it was a Luke Combs song. I think it was, uh, when it rains, it pours. And that's, it's like the most ridiculously easy song I have ever learned. (laughs) It's literally like two chords and as the most simple progression ever. Hey, it's the first song and you picked up the guitar and you did it. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Yeah, for sure. So how long have you been playing piano again? I don't remember. Um, So yeah, like bits and pieces whilst kind of uh, growing up. But I guess with the band, I think it's been like four or five years now that I've kind of really picked it up properly. I gotcha. I gotcha. Uh, Let's see. So um, do you play any others or is it just the piano and the, the guitar? 
I think it's just those two. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Unless something else comes up and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing this. You play the trombone, is that correct? Is that yes, correct? I do. S- still, actually. Oh, I, nice. Cool. I, um, I still have my original trombone from high school. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I had been playing it since sixth grade. So I've been playing it since I was, uh, let me do the math for a second. So I'm 24. Sixth grade was 10 years ago. 11 years ago so that means i would have been like 13 14 since age 14 i believe wow nice so and you still play occasionally yes i do yeah. uh it's so much fun it yeah. and the i give i get i've trombones get such a like we talk so much we talk our instrument up so much it's and the reason being is because it truly is the best instrument in the entire band i mean you don't have an instrument that's going to create the same kind of sound ever yeah it is uh, yeah I mean, you literally, you just, you can bend the sound with the slot. It's so cool. Nice. <laughs> it's the coolest instrument ever. Um, I just played that in a little bit of guitar, but uh, you you probably know a lot more about guitar than I do. I just pick, I just pick around a little every once in a while. I remember when, when I, when I joined the band um, that I'm in now, the guitarist that we have, uh, Ian, he was, at, you know, he's, I don't know if you've seen any of the covers that I popped up with. Ian. I think I have a couple of um, them. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a, a, a wonderful guitarist and he's like oh, 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 you know all this and I remember saying to him this was like the first or second time I met him and I was like yeah no I I, I sing um and I you know I play a bit of the guitar nothing like you and I wanted to make sure because I was like please do not make me do anything like this this was before I was even uh, kind of stepping in to the band I used to watch them before because I yeah. knew the person that I um stepped in for but yeah I, <laughs> I wanted to be like yeah I play guitar too but then instantly I was like Mm, but mm. not like you <laughs> eat your own words right yeah yeah i was like wait 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 wait, hold on <laughs> maybe not as well as you <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um what are some things that people might not know about you in your internet music life like outside of that <clears throat> or um, or in that life it doesn't matter and just some things that people might not know about you yeah um i think I always get asked this question um, because of my surname. <laughs> uh, they're like, is it German? Is it, I don't know. So it's Austrian, uh, my surname, but Ooh. I am half Dutch, half Italian. So Half Dutch, half Italian. There you go. Yeah. So the Austrians from the Dutch side and then um, they moved to Holland. But uh, yeah, so my dad's Dutch. My mum is Italian. Um, and it's a great mix because they're both very different language uh based so i can because i speak both of those languages as well so Ooh. it's really nice um so when i hear like either german or spanish i can kind of pick that up as well because of the dutch and italian so yeah. it's quite nice having two very different um uh like cultures in countries yeah. so that's something some people do kind of already uh i always get kind of questions <laughs> in the comments <laughs> like glatz where is this from and i'm like oh just you wait <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah that's yeah that's um something and i guess something that uh i haven't mentioned at all but let's just go for it why not uh when i was 13 i received my black belt in karate oh look at you hello there you go. Little martial art plug. <laughs> she's kind of, she's actually kind of dangerous then. I, I know. I'm just I'm putting that out there so people are like, oh wait, <laughs> maybe I should not put this mean comment on the comments. <laughs> just karate chop you into next week. Yeah, through the screen. <laughs> 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 That's pretty cool. I wish I had gone gotten to go train and get my um, black belt at some point. I thought that would have been yeah. the cool thing ever, coolest thing yeah. ever. I mean, I, yeah, I started when I was seven. Um, I think there was like a flyer at school and my dad was like, yeah, why don't you and your sister go? And then after my parents joined, so it was a little family thing that we did. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, continued until I had my black belt, still stayed on for a while, but then I went off to university and obviously, you know, things kind of get busy. So I did, I have stopped, but, um, yeah, Yeah. that's a little, um, achievement. (laughs) That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Cool little tidbit that I, even I have, wouldn't have known about for sure. (laughs) Um, what are some things that you do in your off time when you're not singing, recording videos, performing, etc.? Do you know what first came to mind? <laughs> and I tried not to even <laughs> think of this. I was like, I love food. <laughs> I'm such a big, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I just, <laughs> I, 
love food. I love trying new food. Like going to uh, the new restaurants and stuff? Yeah, new restaurants, new kind of cuisines and trying new food. Um, love going to the theatre and watching films and movies. Um, so that's, yeah, that's, it's, it's quite tricky. Uh, I'm quite lucky and grateful that what I do is what I love. So, you know, right. I, um, so even though it is work, uh, and I have to like remind myself that it is work, even though I'm enjoying this, you know, I, I, I love, I love my music. I love practicing my music. I love yeah. know, working on my voice, working on new songs. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's very much what my life is revolved around anyway. So it's kind of like putting work aside, but I'm still doing it. But aside from that, yeah, I, I, I would say like, I, I love going to the theater. It's, um, that's a lot of fun. People don't like draw enough attention to just going and watching a good movie. Yeah. 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 Going to, um, the cinema theater, the movies, I like going to see live theater as well. Like live, um, Oh, those are fun like too. Musicals, straight plays. I love, Oh, uh, what did I go? Oh, we went to go watch, um, Darren Brown, who's like an illusionist. That was fun. Ooh, that I got brainwashed. Cool. I, I didn't <laughs> think I could. And I sat there and I was like, I've lost 10 seconds of my, of my life. Oh my God, it's good. <laughs> Like I, I'm not allowed to say anymore because that's how good it was. And he wants to keep it a secret, but I'm not going to say. <laughs> yeah. I, one of my favorite things to do, like we had, um, I would go on vacation. It's about four hours from where I live. If we go up into the mountains and they had this cool show up there, it was a murder mystery show, but it was also a dinner show. So it was a dinner show. You sat at your own this table. This sounds like my thing. Hold on, food and a show. <laughs> yes, hallelujah! It was awesome. I'll have to like maybe one day I'll have to like send you a link of like where I went. Oh, yes, like please. should you ever come over this way to the states? Then it's yeah, it would be really cool. But yeah, it was awesome. literally you sat down at your dinner table. You got what you wanted. They brought it out to you. You were eating while you were watching this show and. <laughs> And then you had like your own little like little cards and you had little pencils that you would write who you thought the murderer was after like, it was some really cheesy, like, ah, and then somebody <laughs> yeah. would just like, you know, the lights would go out and then like it was a gunshot or something. And then one of them would run off into the darkness and then they'd disappear for the rest of the show. It was so yeah. much fun. Oh my God, that sounds amazing. I'm like so excited that I'm sat here. <laughs> I want to be it, there. <laughs> it was, it was a little bit cheesy at first, but I was like, wait, this is actually really entertaining. Yeah, just get into it, roll with it. <laughs> oh yeah, it was awesome. I remember yes. that was like my first, one of my first show experiences. Mm -hmm. I remember the very first one. My mother was um, still in college, I guess university for y'all. Um, she was in college when I was little, and we. She ended up having to go to a theatrical performance somewhere to for as part of her class so we ended up going to i believe this theater in virginia above the state where i live called um uh, forgive me if i butcher this pronunciation anyone that's been there but it's called the Walfart theater um and we watched i don't even remember what it was called but it was like it was a musical it was a music theater like production it was yeah. so much fun it was a really cool like dinner show thing too Oh, nice. I think that was my first ever one that I watched. And I was like, people do this. This is so cool. <laughs> yeah, there's something about live theater, like just because every show is different as well. Like, you know, and, and and obviously they're professionals, but sometimes when like anything can happen still. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So if you witness like every show is different. So if you go and see it at the beginning and then go and see it a few months later, you're going to notice something different. And yeah, it just it's. It's mad how actors keep that uh, alive, right? Because they're doing yeah. it eight shows a week uh, or however many their contract is. But, you know, just keeping that spark alive. It's just so magical. I just love it. <laughs> yes, it is. Indeed, it is. And I'll tell you the coolest thing ever I've seen in, like, musical theater is just the way that they not only they act, they they tend to have good voices and are very coordinated. And, the, I mean, it's, it's it takes a, a whole other breed for that kind of work. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it, they sing, dance, and act at the same time. It's all so three, it is it is <laughs> oh, crazy. Three. And then you get into act and muso shows, and they're holding a guitar and singing. Oh, it's a whole thing. It's so great. It's, <laughs> it is so cool, and you just sit there and you're like, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's Blow no other way to react. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. So, um, how often do you practice singing throughout the week, and if and how long do you typically practice for? Um. 
I guess it depends. I like to um, get a little something every day. Um, just just to keep it kind of moving. And when I say that, it can literally mean like on one of those days, if I don't really want to work, it will be like a breathing exercise and some SOVT light exercises. Yeah. Um, and that can be, you know, five, 10 minutes. But when I'm sitting down and actually working like on a warm up and then going on through exercises of my voice, um, I like to at least do like half an hour um, at least. Gotcha. Um, uh, yeah. and then, and then it depends again, if I want to then work on songs, <laughs> I'll keep going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I try and do, I'm currently, I don't know if you can tell, I'm currently a little bit under the weather. Um, so maybe I haven't been <laughs> doing as much as I'd like this week, but, um, yeah, I try to do on a, when I work, when I'm working on it for like, um, say a solid half hour, um, mm. You know, I, I get my keyboard out and I set everything up and kind of follow through. I, I, I tend not to do many different exercises for me. Um, like I tend to stick on the, on, the, on the normal kind of, you know, sirens, M's, some breathing exercises beforehand and going on to like open vowels, focusing on chest, going yeah. up to head voice and mix. Um, occasionally I will like, well, let me just try this out. Let me try this out. But otherwise I kind of, I like going to my, um, warm up. This is uh, like I like going my go to. Um, yeah, so I, I try. I try a name for every day something between five ten minutes, and then hopefully longer <clears throat> on those days that I can. Yeah, yeah, and that seems like a reasonable time period too. Whenever you're warming up, I think it's like I'd say anywhere from twenty to forty five minutes, even like yeah. thirty seems to be the sweet spot. I've noticed. Yeah, yeah, like thirty is a good like when I when I can when I manage and schedule <laughs> and I've got 30, I'm like, good, I'm going to get a good practice in. Uh, I can focus on things. And then after that is when I then go on to um, like working on songs. And like, it depends on what, um, where in the process I am with, with learning songs. Like, cause even before, yeah. before, you know, I start learning a song, I won't actually go ahead and sing it. Right. <laughs> right I need to yeah. kind of, uh, listen to it and kind of, I do like working with sheet music, but um YouTube is here now and it's so much easier just to kind of listen yeah, it <laughs> to is. Of things. But I do, I do have like folders and folders of sheet music from university. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I think uh, when working through songs, sometimes it's like, you know, you're focusing on the lyrics a lot. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm kind of focusing and connecting on that. And then when it actually gets to the, I think a good thing to do when working on songs that I found is, as well, because there, you can overwork, right? Right, especially yeah. when you like what you're doing you're like i just want to sing again from the beginning i just want to keep going going <laughs> yeah and actually it's just working on those little sections um putting exercises to those little sections and then leaving it for a little bit <laughs> yeah coming back to it tomorrow or whatever but yeah that's i mean that's at the end of the day if you've got the time then it, it don't hurt to do it yeah exactly <laughs> so uh, let's see. Um, so you kind of touched on this a little bit, but my, our next question is typically, what does your warm up routine look like on any given day? And do you have a go to warm up exercise? Okay. Um, yeah. So I I do like starting with like, uh, I do yeah like a breathing kind of exercise, but I also like connecting like my it's kind of like a yoga exercise like my hums uh with my bodies right so so with my body sorry so i close my eyes arms out i'm humming and i'm just connecting so that's kind of like my first go-to i like doing that when i wake up um i also like sirening when i wake or even if i'm not warming up then i like sirening in the morning because <laughs> this is just a personal thing but because when you wake up obviously your voice is like oh like you know it's just the morning yeah so you can feel all those bumps and like cracks in the morning and you're like oh cool then i go and have my coffee i go and do my uh, morning things and then when i come to actually doing a uh, uh, warm-up sorry go back to my siren and i'll see if anything's changed already so yeah. like i'll see if things kind of slot into place um yeah i i like working with straw with straw work like with water or Oh, well, my actual straw, I don't know where it is. I think it's over there. Um, but yeah, straw work, SOVT exercises first. Uh, then moving on to my chest voice, because that's like, I'm kind of speaking. So we're focusing yeah. on that. Then I jump to my head voice, uh, wake that up. And again, I like jumping back to a siren 
every so often because I'm kind of, right, now I've warmed up this part. Let me go again with the siren and see if I'm smoothing that out. Yep. Uh, then I work on my mixed voice um, and kind of different levels of my mixed voice. Um, so like a bit more like a head dominant mixed voice or a blend, or like 50-50 blend or a yeah. chest, uh, chest dominant mixed voice. And then after that, then I'll start focusing on like um, exercises. So like certain areas of my voice. Yeah. If I want to work on um, like different styles. Yeah, that tends to, that's that kind of like order that I tend to go in. I gotcha. So tell me briefly what, what sirens are. Cause I've, I don't know if I, I feel like I know what they are, but I need a brief explanation. <laughs> that is all right. I've just said sirens about 50 times today. Um, so a siren is the energy sound. Uh, so, I mean, this is how I, every voice teacher might say something different. This is the thing with singing, right? <laughs> we yeah. all kind of mean the same thing, but we might use different words. Yeah. And you can, like, when you think of a siren, you think of like, you know, yeah. like that yeah. siren sound. Yeah. Um, so for me, I like my sirens on an NG sound. Uh, like I said, I'm a little bit <laughs> ill, so my sirens won't be the best today. But the yeah. if you say the word sing, sing that kind of sing, mm, at the back mm, right oh okay yeah yeah and then you use that to like sing. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay like, yeah i see up and down um so yeah that's just i used to do this a lot um like when i used to catch the uh the tube i guess it's the subway <laughs> yeah 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 um when when it's like noisy so if you like <laughs> just making the voice. You're not doing it's too like much. nobody's gonna hear it it's nobody's not gonna, gonna matter, hear yeah. it it's quite a quiet sound you want it to be quiet you don't want to like um force the volume out because it's just going to be a quiet sound yeah. um and yes yeah, so that's that's what siren is that's pretty cool and it, it, if it works that well for like train like training your voice and such then i'll have to incorporate them in, in my routines yes sure. do. and like i said it's, it's like personally like i like doing i like doing it first doing a little bit coming back to it because you can kind of see it strengthen and grow and it's it's nice like you know because it, it's uh when we are singing or going through exercises we we want to see results straight away but we're not going to that's <laughs> just not building, how the voice works not, yeah. yeah we want to we're like come on i could you know it's like going to the gym we're like we've done one exercise one workout oh, i've got no abs yet dang it <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> we yeah we want to see we want to see results straight away but that's just not how it works so yeah. with the siren it's kind of like a little you can actually see it strengthen as you work on your voice. Um, and yeah, so it's a nice kind of little reminder that you are going the right way. Um, yeah. You are, you're always, you know, even whatever kind of, however long you take with your voice, you are always going to be strengthening it because you are working on it. So you're, you know, doing the right thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was always wondering about how much the SOVTs and the uh, stringing with the straws really affects the voice. And I've ever since my podcast with Peter, I've really been starting to delve into it. I'm just like, if it has this much of a positive effect, I'll have to incorporate that too. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's every voice is different. So I would say try it. <laughs> uh, try and see what happens. So the thing with straw work, what's happening is that, you know, the airwaves are coming out, but some of it's being trapped in and going yeah. back to our vocal folds. So we're strengthening that. Go ahead and try it. It's it's a really lovely for me, uh, especially around like tricky areas of the voice where like around the first passage where things are like what's gonna go, <laughs> what's happening here, yeah. things are flipping all over the place. If you work on SOVT exercises around those areas, obviously work on it throughout your whole range. But especially like if you've got a passage uh, in a song that goes through your first passage or through an area that you're like or is it lying? I don't know. And yeah. you, you use like lip trills or sirens or the straw work. Uh, you, it begins to place things in the right placement for you, right? You, you can right, feel yeah. where it needs to go and you can feel your muscles then get used to things. You can then remember when you bring the words to, <laughs> to the tune, where mm. things have to go. You know, then obviously vowel placements come into play after, but it's a good starting place to allow your muscles to go to the right placement for you and you could like feel where it needs to go without because sometimes you know we can bring a lot of tension up so that the sovt kind of like calms that down a that's bit. pretty cool that's definitely gonna have to try that soon yeah i do let's see uh let's see so we're moving on to a little more of like range related questions so um what are your what is your daily usable chest range 
just range. Um, so <laughs> uh, I would say F3 is like, I could do that <laughs> um, for for myself, <laughs> the lowest. I can go lower sometimes like in the, in the morning or if I'm ill um, or if I'm really channeling my Jeff. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I think on my CV, just say F3 is like what a comfortable, like if I was to just like, you know, sing that, that'll be there. Um, mm. So this is where things kind of cross for me. Um, because I fully, I believe in like uh, the mixed voice makes sense for me. Yeah. So I would say like my first passage where I start flipping, where, where I start going into my next passage is around B, B flat, but I can bring a full chest belt uh, to, I would say a C, C sharp four, sorry, five, where am I? Um, <laughs> five, four, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but, I have a really strong, like, chest dominant mix belt that can go high. Clean, clean into the sixth octave, right? Um, well, into G, will be G5, I think. Okay, yeah, right there at the top of the fifth, right? Yeah, 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 just before, just before the C6, which is like... <laughs> it's it's on up there. Yeah, like, well, so it's really odd. The, the reason why I have um, such a, like passion about the mixed voice is because when when uh when studying when we had like you know we stand up in front of one another and we sing our songs for that week we get given feedback we break it down um and i remember someone you know coming up to me like you're not belting that though are you and i was like yeah i think it was uh, an f5 um and i was like oh, i am <laughs> what do you mean yeah. <laughs> and they're like no but you're doing something different you're not you're not reaching up for your chest voice there. I was like, well, of course I'm not reaching up for my chest voice up there. Are you insane? <laughs> You'd hurt, like, no. <laughs> that would hurt. That would hurt, exactly. Um, and a lot a lot of it is like through discovery of just making weird noises, which I advise anyone to do. Go around the house making weird noises. Love it. Yes. Um, but yeah, I remember like, you know, just this person was like, but that's not you belting then. And I'm like, okay. Belting is a style, right? It's not yeah. a register. Like you can belt in your full chest voice. You can belt in your mixed voice. You need your chest voice in that mixed voice. And you need, you need it to be chest dominant for it to be a belt. For it, um, to, for it to sound like a belt, for it to feel like a belt. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And and it's all about, like, it's, it just wouldn't be achievable, sustainable for you to just keep reaching up with your chest voice, right? You'll eventually get tired. It mm -hmm. still sounds full. It still sounds like a belt. And that's the whole, um, that's what you want. <laughs> and you want to be able to keep repeating that, right? Yeah. And chest or chest head voice mix is a, is a ridiculously overpowered kind of thing too, because so many people can use it to just go way on up into the clouds. And it's, especially when you got high singers like Dimash, you know? Yeah with crazy crazy chest head voice mix yeah ridiculous and so, i know yeah and, and, then, and then every voice is different right so so yeah. some people can still bring that level of uh but, but there's always going to be a balance as soon as we go through the first passage there's going to be start like blending is going to start even if it, yeah. it can be like 90 percent chest voice and 10 percent head voice but there is still that blend it's not going to be fully um thicker folds up there because it's just that's just not what's happening yeah. i saw that you reacted to dimash recently didn't you your... yes yes i did <laughs> i um had to be careful with the um the copyrights but he is by far and away probably the best mix user i have ever seen it's like he's got um and also this is a thing you can once you get to a certain part of your voice when it's just fully like head voice and you've got maybe a little bit of that chest voice still in there because it's like that blend. You're yeah. heavily relying on twang then, right? You're yes. heavily relying on other techniques to kind of um, help you maintain that sound. And he's just incredible. He's just like. I mean, he. I mean, he literally smashed a B five in that SOS cover. <laughs> in a male voice. In a, yeah. <laughs> it, it is insane. It's brutal how good his voice is. Yeah. But that he is probably the best head head chest mix user I've ever yeah, heard. Yeah. So far, at least. Um, so uh, what are your record highs and record lows in your um, chest voice? Um, if you know what they are. 
Oh, uh, do you know what? I, I do I do like <laughs> recording in the morning. I'll be like, no, damn it, just to see. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think um, I get really excited when I'm when I hit anything around like D three, C sharp three, C three, and I'm like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> yeah, that. I know. I'm like, yeah, just maybe <laughs> won't happen now. <laughs> Oh, but, yeah. but uh, yeah so so i'm like wait does that hold on and then other days i won't be able to do that at all and it will be it'll definitely be when it's like in the morning um highs i surprise myself sometimes when i i think it's like when i'm reacting to people and they're singing up there and i'm like yeah where is this and i'm like wait what <laughs> <That> <laughs> what was, just happened that just me like huh <laughs> um so i you know when i oh what was it was it um Uh, was it um, Hide and Seek? I can't remember which version it was now. If it was with Voice Play or uh, Bass Gang. But um, <laughs> Lauren Paley was like somewhere up there. <laughs> and I just yeah. like, and I think I got something like an E6 and I was like, oh, like whistle kind of. And I've never really played around with whistle. Like you know, that's not a style that we generally looked at at musical theater training. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um so it's very much new to me. Um but I was like let's just again you're just exploring with your voice, making a sound, let's see. And I oh, I was like look at this. Come on, Jen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look at me. But otherwise, yeah, C6 um would be it's on my um CV or resume. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Oh man. I th and on that, on, I think on both of those uh, versions, I think Lauren does an E flat six on both of them. It's on both of them. Okay. Yeah. 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 She had the one at the end in uh base games version. I yes. just hit the mic. And then she had the one um, right before that section where they drop into, da -da 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 -bum, you know, and I think yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. she hit both of those. Yeah. But no. that is, that is just flat out ridiculous. That I is know. the way she just does it. It's like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm just, I mean, you, you saw the, my reaction in the very first video when she did. I was just like, yeah, <laughs> I, like, I mean, like what? it was so clean, so uh, ridiculously clean. So smooth. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, so, um, who are some of your personal favorite artists that you've collaborated with? That I've collaborated with, um, well, I mean, first of all, I love collaborating with Ian. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've got to give a little shout out to Ian. Uh, no, he's great to work with. We've got a lot of fun things coming up this year as well. Um, really exciting things, some new things as well. So I'm really excited to see where that goes. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, oh, I've got some really exciting things as well, actually, this year. But I'm not going to say any more. So you'll have to just watch. <laughs> Under um, an NDA, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but otherwise, last year was really fun to work with uh, Peter Barber on the Frozen song. That was that so was fun. awesome. Um, that was like a little twenty second of bravery from me. I was like, "Hi, Peter, would you like to do a little <laughs> duet with me?" And he was like, "Yeah, absolutely." I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> "You?" Um, no, that was a lot of fun, and it was just something really like I didn't. You know, he's a very busy person. I didn't want yeah. to. Um, uh, I wanted something that was just really fun and easy for us both to do. And that was a lot of fun. I, it, you know, it, I love, it was really nice seeing like the comments saying, oh, I didn't realize these two worlds were going to collide. It's like, little did you know. <laughs> little did you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I really like working with um, Hege as well, who is, she also does reactions over on her channel. Um, but she, we did a Christmas cover this year and we, or last year, and we did, another cover the year before but she's great she's great fun um yeah i'm trying to think uh who else i think it's just a lot of it it's left me feeling very excited with uh what's going to happen this year <laughs> oh yes it's already a big year yes yeah i'm, I'm feeling i'm i you know i'm feeling really positive about this year i just i just can't wait to say yes to more things. <laughs> it's going to be awesome for sure. Yeah. Something that I'll, I'll have to uh, talk with you all off camera on is um, I'm, I'm trying to think of a project that I want to do music wise, like actually doing my own music that Ooh. you may or may not get an invite on. So 
may or may not. Don't tease me like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds good. <laughs> Heavy. Uh, it's going to be like a 100% will, 0% won't. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we'll see I how see. it goes. <laughs> nice. Um, let's see. Um, who are some people that you would like to collaborate with in the future on some music? Who would I like to collaborate with? Is this the moment where I say home free? <laughs> I'm so, <laughs> sure. I, I've started. I've started saying it at the end. I love seeing the comments, and I keep like screenshotting them and putting them in my little manifest. Uh, yeah, part. yeah. Right, I keep getting, ah, oh, Jen, home free will come to the UK soon. You've got to get on tour with them. I'm like, all right, cause steady on. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Um, and like, oh, I'd love to see Jen with da 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 da. -da. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna start screenshotting them, put them in a little folder, reading them whenever I want, just to be like. Maybe one day. Um, Maybe one day. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I, <laughs> this is obviously, I, 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 I'm I, saying this purely to put it out in the universe, which is why I'm saying home free or voice play or the bass guy, whatever. Um, but I would love to work with anyone who is equally interested and excited by music. You know? Like, it's not anyone that is like specific, maybe. It's just like, yeah, I, I just, I love <laughs> just, just working on music with people that want to work on music as well that's gonna be that's so much fun to just do music i mean it's it's t a totally different feeling whenever you dive into music with someone that loves it just as much as you do yeah it's yeah. awesome lots to discuss and lots of like uh you know routes to kind of go down and just try and experiment so yeah just uh yeah maybe not anyone like specific but just <laughs> i will say yes <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's nothing wrong with that answer at all. Um, so this is a bit of a convoluted one, but um, do you have any tips, tricks, or life hacks for anyone that sings, wants to sing, or is trying to make a career out of singing? Okay. Um, you, <laughs> this is, a, I'm talking from being very wise here. No, um, <laughs> just, I think we limit ourselves a lot. Uh, and we shut ourselves down quite quickly. Um, but actually we hold a lot of, if singing is something that you want to do, but we, you know, we hold many colors and sounds in our voice already. So I, I like I kind of said earlier, experiment with making weird noises. <laughs> 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 um, I cannot stress that enough. And I know it's weird because singing is such a vulnerable thing, right? You can't change your voice. It's not like, you could buy another guitar and see if it feels like, like you know, you're, you're, you, you're, it's your voice. Yeah. Um, so, and if someone has ever like said anything negative towards your voice, that's going to kind of stick in your brain. It doesn't have to be really negative, like just anything, like, you know, you're going to hold on to that because you're like, that's my voice. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, it's, it's so scary to put that away, but once you kind of like accept that making a weird noise means you cannot go wrong. You're not gonna make a mistake. You're just literally going like, you know, ah, like that, cause that's a, that's a weird noise, right? Yeah. <laughs> just whatever. And then you can kind of from there, see how it feels and, you know, kind of base something, base that feeling, go back to that feeling, bring it to an exercise and kind of bring it back to, oh wait, now I am singing. Um, so I think the advice would just be <laughs> make weird noises may explore like you know tell your friends and family whoever you live with that you're going to be making weird noises and just have fun with it <laughs> roll with it and and just it sing do it just do it i mean yeah just make yeah. noises sing and if if they don't like it ignore them exactly yeah I, that's what i mean like it's so we hold so much pressure on ourselves anyway so it's gonna it's so and i and, you know i know it's it's very um like i used to when i when i i, I, li I don't live with my parents anymore but when i did um I used to be upstairs making weird noises, you know, just or just maybe not even making weird noises. I was singing and I went wrong. Like I made a mistake and I'd go, mm. sorry, like they didn't care. <laughs> but I used yeah. to, you know, like, like there was a crack in my voice or something, you know, something happened. I was like, ah, and I, I wanted to make sure that everyone knew that I went wrong. Not that I was just singing and I went <laughs> wrong and I was like, oh, what's she doing? Kind of thing. Yeah. But I, you know, so it's so... I, I understand it's so like tricky just to kind of like put yourself rather than kind of stay in there can you know put that aside and be like right I'm allowed to make mistakes I'm allowed mm -hmm. to do something and to see where it goes and also 
see where it goes, maybe not like it, and let's leave it. Like, we don't have to keep fighting, like, to try and make it work, whatever. Um, yeah, that would be my advice. Sing. <laughs> Just always sing. <laughs> that was something that I that I really didn't realize, too, whenever I first burst onto the scene in the reaction series. I didn't realize how welcoming people were in the music industry. Mm. I mean, albeit I'll every every industry has their has their people that are obviously the other direction and toxic and stuff. But it's just it feels like the music industry, reaction industry, both seem to be very welcoming places. It's really nice. I think what's nice as well is that occasionally you'll see like uh, the comments as well. Like you know, not only uh, in Messenger, but like also in the comments of, on YouTube. Like you, you know. Oh, I love this setup. I oh, love what you do here. Love the balance of the, and it's just like, oh, I'm doing something so, right. Like it's something right. You do yeah. like it's, it's really nice. It's it's really, um, it's positive, and it makes you want to keep making more content as well. Exactly, and isn't that isn't that the greatest feeling ever when you hear someone say something nice, and you're like, oh, that's kind of, that's kind of cool. People know, are enjoying yeah. what I say. And I'll, and also I like because sometimes it could be something that only you've kind of. You're like, oh, I wonder if anyone will And then they'll mention it. You're like, oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Get all, you'll have be all giddy and stuff. Yeah. That's pretty yeah, awesome. That pretty nice. um, so that brings us to the end of the traditional. Actually, no, it doesn't. We've got a f couple more and then we come to the break. Um, so let's see. What are your thoughts on extended techniques in singing? What are my thoughts? Um so extended techniques such as uh, so it are any as in like lower or higher or extended techniques as a whole okay the concept um, i mean if that becomes uh something that someone relies on like that they want to like um keep going i uh what's just come into mind is I like bringing up anecdotes. I'm sorry. Something else just popped in my mouth. No worries. <laughs> um, is like when someone, um, for example, someone like belting out a, a big note and people going, yeah, but because they made like a loud sound, right? Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily about what the voice is doing or where they are in their voice or what the storytelling or whatever. It's just kind of sometimes we as audience members, we could just be like, we hear the lowest thing. We hear the highest thing. We're like, yeah. <laughs> we just go to we're like we're celebrating it's like well actually what what let's break down what we've just heard or what we've just seen so i think it's nice because it's um it's different and it kind of stands out but it's not we we don't want to always i say this a lot to my students as well we don't want to it's not about growing our range right it's not about kind of like um pushing for that or like higher is better lower is better i think we want to try and find that consistency within what we already have and strengthen that yeah yeah um, because also again i have so many students wanting to like come in and they're like i want to sound like this person doing this i want to sound like this person doing this here and i'm like well how would you sound doing that like let's just put you know we put everything let's, aside and just listen to what you sound like. let's, let's listen to what you're offering and then we can work on that because you, we are, we have our voice. <laughs> we don't have their voice. Right. Um, and it can be so. Um, so it take it can take a while to kind of like let that settle in, you know, um, that you won't sound like someone else. You're like, oh no, that means I can never sing. And it's like, well, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you all sound like you. And I think I think people, um, once again, once you kind of put that aside and focus on that, you can have a lot more growth and noticeable growth. Yes, not straight away, through time and practice, but uh, noticeable growth with the kind of range that you have, like with that kind of um, A to B that you have, like focusing on that yeah. um, slot. So I think it's a good kind of like um, thing to throw out. It's like, oh, <laughs> like a nice shot, but it shouldn't be what people work towards. Right. It should be, it should be less focus on extended techniques, more working on the, act, the, the chest range and... Just the yeah, things just, that you're used to. Like, you yeah, know, I mean, your voice. it's good to work all areas of your voice. Um, right. So, like, uh, chest and head voice. Uh, so, you know, this mixed voice. Um, we want to be, if you're more developed in your chest voice, then a chest 
dominant mixed voice is what you're going to kind of be having more of, right? Rather yeah. than if you are more developed in your head voice and your chest voice is lacking, then when you kind of try and mix and blend those two together, then your head voice will overpower the chest voice. So it's always yeah. good, I think, head and chest, you should, you want to like work on both of them together. It doesn't mean that you're going to, if you, you know, if you're an alto or a, uh, you know, a bass, doesn't mean that you're then suddenly going to be singing all these high notes. <laughs> right. It's just purely to strengthen because that is your full voice, your full voicing sound, right? And then, mm -hmm. and that's going to the middle part of your voice will then strengthen and benefit more. The transitions will then benefit more if you're developed in both of those um, sections. Yeah. So I mean, as as a whole, they're great. But it's if you can, like the the thing that I'm gathering here is that you basically you want to like worry a little bit less about getting extended techniques and working just with your you know. Within with the, what, with what, with you, what you kind of um, like have, because because otherwise we then end up wanting to sound like something that we <laughs> we're not. Right, <laughs> um, exactly. Like, but but everyone, you know, even though this is the thing, like with head voice, a lot of the time people will come like, oh, I don't have, don't have that. Well, woo! Like I'm pretty sure <laughs> if you were like on a roller coaster, you'd be like, ah, like <laughs> way up there, right? Yeah. So it is, yeah. yeah, it is, it is still part. It's just because we don't talk in it, we don't use it every day. We talk in our chest voice, so that's going to be way more um, comfortable, way more obvious to us as a uh, choice, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's focusing on getting that sounding. Um, I would say sounding clear and connected, but then we want to, we want it to, we want the singing voice to be that extension of our speaking voice. So obviously, if you have like a breath like quality when you speak, then having that added into your singing voice isn't much different to what you sound like when you talk. So it's not right. like you're adding more breath. <laughs> right. um, you know, you're not adding, uh, you're not altering anything. You're just you're just extending where you're speaking from. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, just focusing on what you have more rather than kind of like reaching for the gods and like you know head voice doesn't have to be like reaching up as well <laughs> we yeah. can work on that just after the first passage as well it doesn't have to be like right up there and again yeah. chest voice doesn't have to be like fighting for it down there as well yeah um, yeah it's definitely there's they're really cool though i will say that they do add the music yeah um do you or this was not immediately obvious to me so i'm i uh, feel like it's something i should ask uh do you have perfect pitch well <laughs> uh i get I, i've been asked this uh quite a lot recently and i'm like no <laughs> you don't? i do not <laughs> um i sometimes i'm i um i think i have quite you know uh good pitch and like sometimes i'll hear something and i'm like i i quite i quite like to like place it in my in my voice and my sound to see where it would go that's how i kind of hear it okay. um so if i'm like hey okay i'm kind of going you know it's my mix there can i reach it like down the octave okay it's like here let me like and then i work back like that yeah, so yeah. Like, process of like, elimination right yeah yeah i'm like okay it's got to be one of those two and then i'm like oh yes um but no, relative pitch have, then so. relative pitch yeah i don't have um perfect pitch, no. <laughs> i gotcha i gotcha i would love to though have you seen like charlie Puth, Charlie Puth, like, yeah, he's incredible. Yeah. He's like, oh, when he's like, this is a C sharp. He's like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I've been told I have it, but I've, I mean, I'm like, I used to think it was like relative, but then I had a friend in high school tell me that it was perfect pitch and that she would play like four notes for me and I, I'd call out the name of the note super, like, like that. And I was like, well, I mean, yeah, if you could do it right on the spot, then I think that's perfect pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Um, one last thing, and then we'll jump into our little uh, break. <coughs> Excuse me. What is one of your things about, what is your, I can't talk today. What is one of your favorite things about being a singer? Oh, um, aside from the fact that I am doing something that I love, <laughs> um, yeah. I, it feels very, um like powerful um it feels very freeing um 
And sometimes you get those moments where you kind of get lost into it. Uh, you're not thinking about things as much. And I feel like those moments come very rarely. Um, especially like if I'm like with a band, I'm playing the keys, I'm probably focusing so much on the keys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there's too much to think about. Um, but if I'm just like singing and and I kind of get lost in that moment, it's just, it's such a nice feeling because you're really like connected with the words um, and you really feel that story and you're kind of just seeing where it goes. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm getting a lot more used to like uh, improvising with songs. I, it's something that I struggled with being musical theater, we kind of like followed the sheet music, followed uh, what's given. But when you kind of have that freedom, it's really, um, it can feel really powerful. And like, you kind of finish the song and you're like, whoa, <laughs> where was I? I kind of wasn't in the room just then. And that's something that can be really special. It truly is a really cool feeling. Like if you're just out there pouring your heart out into this music and then it almost feels like you don't have a care in the world while you're in the middle of that 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 solo or in the middle yeah. of the music you know yeah that's what i mean sometimes like your mind could be thinking of like what's for dinner <laughs> what what are we doing yeah. like sort of thing and like that is still obviously really really fun but like you're kind of you can feel when you're not really in it but sometimes when your mind just, and you're really focused on what you're singing and it kind of just you just feel really like let go and it's just it's it's yeah it's, it's one of the best like, feelings ever yeah yeah and like and like i said like it's kind of like and then you finish the song and you're like, oh, whoa, <laughs> you're all here. <laughs> whoa, this, what are you doing? <laughs> this just ended. Like, I, this just yeah. happened and this just ended. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's really like magical. It's, it real. there's pretty much no other way to describe it. Magical is the perfect word for it. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of the traditional questions that we ask on every podcast. So that will um, bring us to a small break. This will give us or give you the opportunity to, um, advertise let anyone or let the audience know what you got going on in your musical career plug any merch if you have any plug anything you have the floor for the next few minutes so uh let us okay. know what you got going on let, let me tell you <laughs> um oh you did mention merch i am thinking like when when guys we're almost at 80k um if it does when it gets to 100 i'm like oh should i do merch i don't know um, yes Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wouldn't. I need to. I need to think about what <laughs> what would be on the merch. But I think I, I, I need to ask my trusty patrons. They'll know what to say. <laughs> oh yes, for sure. Um, they'll know. Um, but yeah, musical things happening this year. There are uh, more collaborations, of course, uh, which I'm really excited about. And I'm hoping this is, I, I'm saying I'm hoping, it's January, it's gonna happen, this is the year. Um, I will start releasing my original music as well. So that's in the works, which will be exciting. Um, that will be up on, you know, I'll pop it on YouTube, Spotify, all the streaming platforms, all things like that. Uh, but yeah, it's really, really fun. Um, again, worked with Ian on that. Um, yeah. He was just an incredible musician and friend. So that's really exciting that I got to work with him. Um, other than that, I'm just <laughs> taking it as it comes. I'm pretty just, you know, I will continue posting. I will continue auditioning and taking those jobs that fit in with the schedule that I have. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's you know, very important to me. It's just not, uh, like, overworking. Um, just trying yeah. to balance everything but yeah otherwise what you see is what you get with me <laughs> <laughs> guys make sure you go check her out i will link everything of hers in the description so um i'll link patreon social media her channel etc make sure you go check her stuff out and um yeah so she's got some exciting things coming so make sure that you go tune in so ah. Um, so if you don't have any other advertising or plugging pieces, we'll move on to this next little section where you'll have the floor also for the next few minutes to ask me whatever is on your mind. So if you have anything for me, now is your chance. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> so, Rue. Yeah. <laughs> um, you say you like black coffee. What else do you like to drink? <laughs> good. That's a good one. So, um. I believe it or not, I'm I'm a, I'm a water snob. I um. I finished mine. <laughs> I you know mine's. Hold on, I'll show you. Uh, 
Do you have a big water bottle? Is that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have, wow. I have my my gallon jug here. Nice. Speaking of which, I'm behind. I'm only at half a gallon, and it's oh. almost three o'clock in the afternoon. Oh my god! Here. Quick, get those water sips. <laughs> yeah, but I drink uh, black coffee. I drink a lot of water. Um, yeah. I actually quit drinking soda about five years ago. Oh wow. And um, I'll tell you, on the side note, I've felt be the best I've ever felt after I quit drinking it. So oh, that's good. that was a fun little twist. Um, mm. So the only things I really drink are water, black coffee. I can, I very rare, on occasion, I'll drink like a ginger ale. Mm. But um, I make, sh I'm very specific about my ginger ale brands. I typically yeah. like, I make sure it doesn't have any stuff in it that's like bad for you you know like preservatives and all that i just make sure that if it's going to be a ginger ale it's going to be like a like ginger or like pressed ginger ginger extract and carbonated water and sugar like if it doesn't if it has much more than that i probably won't drink it because yeah, yeah. that's the whole reason i quit soda because of all the stuff that's in it so but yeah as far as uh drinks it's water black coffee ginger ale sometimes i drink um lactose free milk but that's about it Okay, nice. Well, yeah. I swap. I like almond milk. That's uh... my sister likes almond milk. Um, yeah, I use it for my protein shakes whenever I go to the gym. Nice. It's a really yeah, good one. Yeah, that's that's my favorite uh, alternative milk. Um, so, do you still sing like a lot now? Do you still? Um, not recorded. I, I do tend to sing a lot to myself and a lot in the car, yeah. a lot in the shower, blah, blah, blah. But I don't really, I don't really sing on mic that much. Mm -hmm. At least not yet. Um, I have a lot of people that are trying to convince me to put out my own work and I'm working on a couple of small projects. Uh, stay tuned yeah. for that guys. Um, <laughs> I see, I've always struggled with the self-confidence when it comes to my, my voice. I know that's a pretty common issue, but mine was detrimental to the point of me never wanting to sing in front of anybody yeah. that that started i would say probably when i realized i could sing back when i was 12 13 14 years old i was starting to find my voice and i was like okay so my voice is starting to drop does that mean i'm a singer i mean i would start to sing people would say i, I sound good then i was i would listen to myself back and i'd be like eh. <laughs> oh no <laughs> but but um yeah i've here recently i've had a lot of people telling me about how apparently my voice sounds good enough. Like it sounds way better than I give myself credit for. And that's really helped a lot. Yeah. So as far as me, as far as music, I like to sing mainly to myself, but with the recent boost in confidence from some of the people I've talked to, um, I do, I have started singing just less or more on mic, but I just me playing around yeah. with stuff, you know, mixing my own voice and just playing around with silly little projects, like 10 second long audios and stuff and yeah. seeing what it sounds like. But yeah, I, um, thankfully that self-confidence issue is starting to work itself out a little bit. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's so, uh, like you said, you know, it's very common to, <laughs> um, as soon as you kind of have that little self doubt voice like in there, it's just going to keep eating at you. And it's just, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it can do, um, a lot of damage like you know like you know you can and you really believe that voice and you're like well i'm not going to do that then um but i think it's good like you said you've got people that are telling you no <laughs> let's see where this goes like keep let's keep working on it yeah, um, yeah. That's good and like little baby steps and it, no one likes listening to themselves i swear i mean it seems <laughs> like, that seems like it yeah you know i i record like a voice of mine and i'm uh you know a little thing and i'll listen back to it and i'm like <gasps> Really? I was having so much fun doing this. Now I'm listening to this. This was not what I was just doing. What's going on? Um, you know, occasionally you're like, oh, I didn't like really, really well here. But, you know, it, it takes, you have to keep kind of working at it and getting used to kind of hearing yourself. It's a really weird thing to like hear yourself. <laughs> it is. And the only thing that really keeps me going is the fact that other people actually enjoy the sound of my voice. And I'm like, it kind of baffles me that someone actually likes to hear my voice. And I'm, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's a, what can I say? It's a good feeling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And listen to those comments then and just keep going and you're doing the right thing by like taking it slowly, right? You're kind of introducing it back, taking it slowly, singing a few things and seeing how it goes. Um, yeah. Nice. It's a, it's, it's truly a good feeling though, because I, 
one day I may actually be able to put out my own music. It would you be should. nice. Yeah. It would be nice. Just got to make that first step and like, it's always, it's so daunting. Um, yes, it you're is. Put, especially your own music because you're putting your own. And then uh, people are going to read into it and you're like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, it's just, like, you know, <laughs> just take it lightly, guys. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot of things that come down uh, with that. But what's to lose? Go for it. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's, that's the mindset I've really gotten myself into lately. And it's starting to help. I think. Yeah. 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 Cool. I did have uh, one other question. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is more of a reaction kind of question. Yeah. Um, how are you finding the comments? Like, do you have comments that are quite like very passionate about who you react to? Um, to find some comments that are a bit like, well, I'm going to remove this actually. <laughs> or like, are they like nice? Do people kind of keep coming back and commenting? Like, do you see regular people come back? Like, how I, is that um, Typically, it, it's kind of all over the place. So um, I do tend to have a pretty solid following of like regular viewers that will come by and most of them will drop a comment or two be like, hey, we enjoyed the reaction. I didn't notice this or this is awesome. Yeah. I'm glad you drew, your, drew our attention to that. And then there's this one guy that I remember, he's the very reason that I started put, putting more content out like at, at the same pace because I think his name was David, but I don't remember his last name. But he said something that was so inspiring to me as a creator that I just, I was like, okay, now I can't stop. Yeah, he yeah. said something along the lines of um, like you, you, you're very attentive to listening to things and then you draw our attention to the little things in music. And that's, that's, that's what will make a viewer want to come back. And I'm like, yo, you're awesome. Yeah. But well, yeah, it's nice. It's, I, I don't really seem to get very many negative comments, which it, that happens no matter where you go in life. You're always going to get negative Nellies. And I just don't respond to them at mm -hmm. all. I just, I, I will like, if it's even like longer than a sentence, I'll just stop reading and I'll just leave it alone. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't give, I don't give that crap any time of day whatsoever. No, that's good. That's good. I, I don't engage in it. Um, but the overwhelming majority of the comments and the words that are said about my content team to, to tend to be overwhelmingly positive. Um, something that I have noticed is that people are really, are really enjoying the reactions that I do of like more vocal technique. And yeah. Yep. Yeah, so stuff that's acapella, like, like the way the voice sounds, the way they hit these notes, the way they're singing, you know, you're familiar with that because you do it a lot too. But um, as far as uh, rec like requests for reactions and stuff, um, I do tend to get quite a few in the comments as well. Uh, sometimes that's where I get my uh, some of my content from. Mm -hmm. Of course, I have my own uh, personal interest as well as far as like some acapella stuff, you know, home free voice play, yeah. Jeff Castellucci. I've got some others out there that I want to cover at some point. But as a general rule of thumb, like my comment st section just stay pretty positive. I do have a lot of returning uh, commenters and subscribers and such, and it's a really cool feeling. It's so nice. Yeah. Just seeing like the same kind of people pop up. Um, yeah. And it's just, it's like you said, like the, um, you get occasionally you get those really positive comments that just, you know, ensure that, you know, make sure that you're, it allows you to realize that you are doing the right thing. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it, yeah. they, it's what they say to you, like you're, they tell you that you're, what you're doing that they're enjoying. And then you're like, yeah. some of this stuff you might not even realize you're doing, but they, they're appreciating it nonetheless. And you're like, okay, maybe I should yeah. keep doing this. You yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think I got um, a really lovely comment saying something like, you know, not, not only do you share like really uh, like knowledgeable thing, like technique kind of uh, terminology, like things like that about the voice, but just you as a person, like your personality is real. And I was like, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> I was like, that, I can't change that. That's me. Do you know what I mean? Like there's some yeah, things that yeah. you cannot change. So I yeah. think, yeah, it's really nice. Um, I like you said about those like negative comments. You're going to get there everywhere. But, you know, they're that is comments. everywhere in life. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it depends what mood I'm in. Sometimes I'll literally be like, thank you. <laughs> and like, Listen, yeah. <laughs> was this needed? Was this necessary? No. I normally I I have like a folder that I screenshot of all those positive ones. I like looking through. I'm like, yeah, 
like, yeah, I'm going to have a good day. And I've got another positive, all those like negative comments. I'm like, who, right, are you okay? Are you having a good day? What's, wh- <laughs> who, who who made you feel like that? I know, like, who, let's talk about you for a split second because I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I feel, <laughs> what made you think or what made you feel like you needed to tear someone else down? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's not like a necessarily like, Oh, I'm gonna get in a fight with this girl because he said yeah. something bad about my video. No, I'm like, bro, are you okay? Yeah, no, it's just like let's sit down and chat. <laughs> like, yeah, like I'm just like I don't even I don't even like I don't engage with them because I know it's it's a very yeah. it's it's a downward spiral if you do. But like I'm just at that point I'm like I'm less concerned about what they said to me because like I said I don't pay it any mind whatsoever. And no, I'm, exactly. just, I'm just more like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no very much the same <laughs> yeah it's but as far as the negative goes it's overwhelmingly positive over here do you tend yeah. to get much on your end negativity uh I, yeah like i feel like sometimes i get quite a lot um well, not like a lot i think i probably it's it's they were always kind of like stick like it'd be like positive 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 negative positive positive positive, positive. negative and you're like what are you doing <laughs> i have no, gotten like, I've, I have gotten some nasty comments in the in before, but I've I've only ever really gotten like probably one or two like legitimately bad comments that would just had no business even going through the algorithm in the first place. But I just yeah, was- I deleted those completely. The other ones that are like like can definitely be taken rude, but like I'm just like I still I still read them, but I just don't say anything. Yeah. There was a couple of them. Uh, primarily the complaint was I remember back when I first started, I did a lot of starting and stopping. So like a lot of, like a lot of things you do, a lot of things that Peter Barber does, you know, with the reactions, you get a lot of pausing. And then I remember like two or three different people on like three different videos all said something along the lines of this. You're interrupting the listener's ability to enjoy the song with you. You're doing this, that, and the other. You're, you're not allowing us to listen to it. Well, I will explain this very briefly. So for those that don't know, um, I have since changed my format. So I listen to it all the way through now. So that problem has been, for the most part, remedied on my channel. But for those of you that didn't know about my older videos, the the, the idea for stopping and starting so much, and Jen can probably uh, vouch for this too, the point in starting and stopping in all this music is to draw your attention to the little things, the big things, what what makes the music that music what makes it great what what builds the music to the point that it's at i mean it's it's all a learning experience you take that song you break it down and you just explain it to your audience that's what a musical analysis is for and although it could be annoying at times as a as a viewer to watch a reactor pause the song every few seconds it's more often than not for for your um entertainment a and b your um I'm trying to think of the right phrase uh to help you gain more knowledge musically yeah yeah everything that you said there is <laughs> it's it's it, people don't realize <laughs> um and i think that's uh a common comment that i get a lot is you talk too much. You inter- and I'm like, well, I'm going to. <laughs> oh, well, that's that's just that's the niche of YouTube that we're in. We that's, just that's exactly we have this tendency it. to explain music, explain vocal technique. You know, we get excited yeah. when we hear it because like this is so cool. Did you hear that? Did you hear this? You know, it's so I cool. And there's so much going on. Like my brain can't handle. That's why I'm pausing because I'm like, hold on. <laughs> <I laughs> Wait a minute. I yeah. cannot. I cannot just like. I need to process this. I need a moment. So for anyone that is watching or listening to this podcast, um, one thing that I would like for you to take away from this, uh, we don't, we don't hate you for making those comments. You you need to, you need to stop talking so much. We don't hate you for that. Just understand that we do it that way we can help you understand the music. So it's, it's not, it's not malicious. We're going to make them, we're just, we're going to make them (laughs) wait for their music. No, we're trying to help you, trying to help you understand the music. We're just providing some, you know, like you said, entertainment, knowledge, all of it together. Um, You know, I like, like I say in the beginning of most of my videos, if you don't like that, you don't have to be here. (laughs) I mean, you you don't have to. I mean, there's no one's holding you to stay here. Like, you know, and people like, like you said, you know, you, the positive comments are all people that like what you do right they right. like that you pause they like that you stop that you, that you talk and that's that's what you're doing it for you know you want you want to 
pick out those points so that people that have watched that before, watch, you know, know the performance, know the song. They can hear new things, get excited again. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, let's do it together. <laughs> it's And it's, it's really cool too. Like you'll have people that enjoy watching your content and they, they're like, they, they enjoy the original content so much that they go to our space at YouTube to see, to A, learn more about the music, but B, to watch other people react to awesome music. Yeah. It's really yeah. cool. It's really nice. It really is. <clears throat> um. I was going to say something, but I forgot what I was going to say. I have those moments quite often. Oh, I, me too. <laughs> it comes along. Did you have any other questions that came to mind? No, I think that was all for now. <laughs> Sweet. So we will go ahead and migrate on to the community questions. I have, I have just a, I have a small amount of them for you. These kind of, uh, these kind of were from social media, um, gathering a YouTube, different discords, etc. So I've got about four or five questions for you from the community. So, um, Casper, um, you know, Casper, Casper. Yes. So Casper <laughs> wanted me to ask you, um, who is your favorite base gang member and why? <laughs> Can I mention the manager? <laughs> <laughs> um, who is my favorite base gang member and why? Oh, that's not very nice. I can't pick. <laughs> well, I cannot pick. <laughs> well, you can you can you can send Casper a message later. Be like, "Yo, why are you making me pick?" I'll be like, "Thank you." <laughs> I'll message him. Thank you, Casper. Um, no, I love I love them all. I I. What's really nice is that, like I said, I kind of first got, I guess, introduced to one of them or made contact with one of them was Peter because I knew him from the reactions. Uh, I really loved his reactions. I used to watch them before. Um, sent him a message then I started reacting to the bass gang stuff um and then slowly like, I talked to Tommy quite a lot and Marwan I haven't really made much uh contact with Bobby but you know he's great too yeah <laughs> but um but yeah it's it's really nice because um it feels very they're such lovely guys like it's so friendly friendly and just um heartwarming you know like just so they're so lovely and Casper as well like I think I sh- you know they're so supportive um, anything that I'll post, like they sometimes share, they'll comment on something. And I like, you know, it's really nice. Uh, whenever I post something on YouTube or like singing wise, I'll get, I think I asked once, I was like, who runs the bass gang, uh, account? And Peter was <laughs> like, sometimes it's me, but it's mainly Casper. I was like, Casper, <laughs> <laughs> you little softy. <laughs> He's pretty cool, man. I'm telling you, yeah. I got, I had him on for my very first podcast and it was, yes. it was a vibe. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so the bard asks, um, what is your favorite extended technique to whether if it's to listen to, to study, to use in your own music, et cetera, or just if you have a favorite extended technique, what would it be? Ooh. Do you know what the term extended technique I've not heard of since you were, and that's why I asked earlier. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah, I was referring to stuff that's like, um, a lot of what the bass gang does. So they'll to hit those stupid low notes, mm-hmm. uh, you know, stuff like so that. All those kind of like added effects on top of what? like subharmonics, um, ingressive phonation, you know, at the top mm-hmm. of the range, you'll have like whistle, you know, stuff yep. like that. Uh, so what was the question again? Sorry, what would I, what do yeah, I like? So uh, what was your favorite extended technique to he- to listen to, to study, yes. to use in your own music? Just your favorite oh. extended technique. Um, <clears throat> I guess the one that was probably most interesting and I hadn't heard of before until I started kind of reacting uh, was subharmonics. <laughs> yes. And I was just like, what is this level of dirt? Debauchery, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah like like what is going on um and i remember i I think i watched so many jeff castellucci's got quite a few uh videos on like how to achieve it how to i think i got ian onto it as well actually (laughs) so sometimes (laughs) he'll like well just before going on he'll be like (laughs) i'm like oh yeah almost (laughs) and like so i play around um i i like to like hover around and see what i'm doing but i don't know what i'm doing uh this is the thing like made weird make weird noises right (laughs) Are you going? That's my subs aren't working in my low range. Let me try a G1. It's so cool. It's, it's popping in and out pretty bad. My it's subs kind of are like bad. You get but... that hover underneath, isn't it? It's just, yeah, it's so... 
actually going back to the base gang, Tommy was really lovely. Well, after I, I think I, I can't remember what video I posted, but he then messaged saying, if you want to know more about like base techniques, let me know. Cause I'll let, <laughs> I'll, uh, you know, I can guide you to like where to start. And I was like, all right, <laughs> right now. I mean, Tommy's a <laughs> master of them, of them all pretty much. She's got aggressive I mean, subs, chest fry. Yeah. It's incredible. Like, like there's so this is the thing that it's it's ever growing. There's so much you can learn with singing and music. It's just you think you know you know you know so much, and then you're like, wait, hold on, what's this? Oh, let me try this. Oh, let's go here. And like, yeah, yeah I think it's just always forever growing. It's forever exciting. You you always got something to learn. Uh, but subharmonics was definitely kind of like my introduction into like, whoa, well, <laughs> that what? Because <laughs> that was <laughs> obviously that? so new to yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think one of the biggest um, biggest entries into the scene of like acapella music and just subharmonics coming into music in general uh, was the um, Oogie Boogie song. I think yeah. that was probably one of the biggest uh, slides into the industry with subharmonics. Like you hear this song, you're like, how was this man singing an inhuman note? Yeah, like, h hold on, is this possible? Like, how is this possible? What? Yeah, like, well, how is this being achieved? um yeah it's it's just it's yeah <laughs> i'm still figuring it out <laughs> uh, it's barely an a flat one uh just barely it's popping in and out like crazy, crazy. i've been talking yeah. a lot today so my voice is just gassed but yeah that's the thing like yeah if you're just not feeling like i said i'm not i'm not like 100 percent health wise with my voice but <laughs> Yeah, it's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> so uh, Bass Crispies asks, um, how do you find up-and-coming artists to react to? Uh, like, how do I find them to react? Like, Yes, yes, for your reactions, yeah. So how, um, basically, how do you pick them out? How do I pick them out? Um, I kind of like you. Like, sometimes I, I'll have my own list going and people will write them in the comments. Oh, do this next. <laughs> oh, go here. Like, you know, and, I, and I'll ask, especially if it's a new group, um, you know, where should I go now? <laughs> where right. lead me to where I should go next? Um, I on pa on my Patreon uh, page, I like there's a lot of um, asking there and like uh, polls I ask there to see what people want next. Um, but otherwise, I've got I've, I think from that I've managed to get like a whole <laughs> long list, and then I'll keep checking with like voice play and home free if they've released something new. I quite mm -hmm. like. I like going back to them and like any individual work as well. Um, like with the bass gang as well. Um, and also like what's trending, what's come out new. I sometimes, but very rarely would, um, I do sometimes check, but yeah, I, I feel like there's, there are so many, I don't know if you find this, there are so many, you know, um, performances that you want to react to. It's just like fitting everything in. <laughs> it's it, getting it all in. It is just, it's yeah. very difficult to do it all at yeah. once because I'm wanting to eventually stick to a schedule where I upload twice a week. So that way yeah. I'm not like, cause you know, I mean, filming a reaction, if you're doing like a 30 minute one, I know you do yours a little bit shorter than that, but I know with mine, like they can be over 30 minutes sometimes and yeah. fil filming it, it'll take like 30 to 45 minutes. Then you've yeah. got, the editing that you're going to do, if you're going to add any text in, put your intro in there. Yeah. And then by the time you've got that done, you're like an hour or two hours into editing. After you edit, then you have to upload, work yeah. on your tags, video title, description, all of that jazz. Then you wait for yeah. it to upload and then it's up. And if you have any copyright issues, then you have to deal with that. You have to and go back. <laughs> it's a lot of time, but it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing too, because there's so much content to cover. Although it's a good problem to have, I'd say. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's not like, ah, oh, <laughs> I've got, I've got nothing to do. There's always something to uh, bring up and talk about, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, I get really excited and I want to do like so much and I want to talk about so many different voices. Cause I just genuinely get really excited. Right. <laughs> I, I want to yeah. hear as much as I can do. Um, and yeah, so I, I think I went up to three videos a week. Maybe not uh, the end, not last year, but the end of twenty twenty one. Yeah, um, I think. Um, but yeah, it's, I think just because I was managing that schedule, I was like, let me add a, a new day, and, and then I, I started doing those artist weeks as well, which is quite nice because then I get to like. Doof, 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 doof. You <laughs> I just bang so, them out, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, oh, I've listened to so much music. I'm so happy. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's. 
fitting everything in sometimes you want to do more um yeah. that then you just you can't there's not there's only so many days <laughs> yeah that and the fact that um if you were like especially the part where you're not making money money on your videos yet like you're not you don't have the opportunity to monetize before then you're just like you're putting out a ton of content that you're at that point not getting not getting reimbursed for you know you're not seeing any money yeah. move but it's it at that point you're just trying to get to the top to get to a point to where you can make money so i mean it's, yeah, exactly. you're like you're sitting there like what if you're sitting there like am i what i'm doing is it really worth it because i'm just spending like 40 50 hours a week doing videos and i'm not oh, yes. me, eh, you know and then you eventually hit there and like okay not this was worth it before but this is really worth it now yeah yeah and i think like yeah we all i remember when i started i was like let's see i mean i youtube i started um uh like over 10 years ago now i think um but i only started in reactions uh 20 21 um and kind of jumping into that um but yeah like it, like you said there's that beginning part where you're like having to work and maybe the views are kind of going a bit slow but then suddenly something changed and you're like oh okay let's keep doing this and then things start kind of shifting you're like i can mm -hmm. add another day of work because actually things are kind of like you can afford to because your time is no longer it's not costing you anything it's mm. you know you have a way to you can use that you're actually getting paid for your time at that point. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's a cool feeling too because you're getting to do what you enjoy on YouTube yeah. and and you're able to make money doing it. So yeah. it's, it's a really exactly. cool feeling. Yeah. yeah. No, it's really lovely. Um, I've got one more, and this one's from me myself. Um, can you tell us just a little bit about the song that you did with Peter? So like from start to finish, as a general uh, – like as a as a whole just kind of briefly give us or tell us about yeah. it yeah so um i yeah I, I messaged peter i was like hey how are you would you like to do a, <laughs> a little duet uh and then he came back saying yep throw some suggestions here's my email da, 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 da. and i was like okay cool and i i had a few suggestions up uh, i had a few you know i was looking for uh songs to do there were a few back and forward that we were going to um, do like, yes, I like this, maybe not, I don't know. And then, yeah, we went with Disney because we thought, <laughs> we all love a bit Disney. Yeah. Um, it's great. And I liked, what I liked about this song as well is that it wasn't um, someone having a whole verse and chorus, then someone else having a whole verse and chorus. It was very much like conversational. We were going to be, like, I could see it already, right? You could see the interaction. You could picture like, it, yeah. Was, yeah, exactly. And I was like, this is going to be really, really cute. Um, and yeah, uh, we we started it quite earlier on in the year before summer, um, but you know people are busy. Like we, we know both of us are busy. Kind of, I didn't uh, record until a bit later, um, and then Peter recorded a bit after that. It was just trying to find the time to do it. Yeah. Once we recorded it, it was quite quick and like done. It was just finding that time. Um, recorded the vocals. I I uh, mixed everything here. Um, <laughs> And Peter was like, um, do you want me to, like, uh, when I sent him the, the the mixed version, he was like, do you want me to, like, give you any tips or, like, tell you how, I, uh, what you can do to make it, like, better? Or do you want me to just, like, not say anything? And I was like, um, tell me what I can do better, please. <laughs> <laughs> do not just be kind and be like, oh, I don't like this. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so that was very kind of him. Uh, he then gave me some tips back. So I brought it back and I shifted things around. I panned everything and like da 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 da. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, then I recorded mine. Uh, I filmed mine, sorry, then Peter filmed his. And I remember when I put the two together, there was a little section. Have you um, have you watched it? I have not watched it all the way through. I've, I got in the middle of watching it and I had to step away, but I want to go back and watch it again. Yeah, there's a there's a really lovely part. I don't know. Do you know the song? Uh, I, I love it. It's been a long time since I've heard it. <laughs> Have you not watched Frozen like last week? No. no, I, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there's a part in the, there's a middle part of the song uh, between the chorus and then going into the second verse where it's like oh look cute and there's like you know instrumental and I didn't know what to do, um, but when I got the two, <laughs> Peter did this so well because he matched mine. Right, he matched. He kind of matched what I was doing, um, and there's a little moment where we look at each other, we're like laughing, and we turn around. And when I saw it, I was like, 
I like filmed it and sent it to him. I was like, we're the cutest. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh, the fans are gonna go crazy. <laughs> they and um, they did, yeah. didn't they? I know it was so it's so lovely to see those comments. Like I said, people were like, I didn't know I needed this and I, I was like, oh, Yeah. That makes me so happy. Um yeah, so that and then yeah, it was in December that we that I released it. Yeah, so that's kind of made the whole kind of process of it. And hopefully there will be more. I would love to do um, like another one, again, one that like fits in with both of our schedules that we can just kind of, there you go. <laughs> that, I mean, yeah, that would be fun too. And I believe me, I'll have to start covering some content every once in a while of yours. Yeah. We'll see what, see what we can do to line that up. Folks, this yeah. has been the Vocast with Drew. We have come to a close on the community questions. So, Jennifer, do you have anything else for me or anything that you would like to say before we wrap this up? Anything that I'd like to say. I'm going to say it one more time. Make weird noises. <laughs> <laughs> say it louder for the people at the back. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Keep singing. Make weird noises. Love life. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Guys, this has been the Vocast. This is Drew, your host. It's been good to have you. Jen, it's been good to have you as well. Uh, right. Make sure you guys drop a like, throw a comment in, in down below if you're enjoying. Make sure you throw both of us a subscription if you enjoyed this. There will be plenty more of this content coming in the future. And if you are enjoying the, our content enough that you want to take your contribution to another step, be sure to check out both her Patreon as well as mine. Mine, you can support me as little as $3 a month. If you are gaining enough enjoyment out of it that you feel you want to give financially, you are more than welcome to do so. And like, like I said, check her out as well. She puts out great work. She's a very knowledgeable individual and she's got a good voice. So make sure you check her out. Guys, this has been the Vocast. It's been great having you. We love you. Take care of yourselves. We will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>